To have faith in God is not a stagnant state, it's a journey. As believers, we should grow in our knowledge of God and His Word. Walk with Alan Cutting and many other believers as we walk the believer's journey. Aloha and welcome to the Believer's Journey. I want to thank everyone who supports our ministry here. I want to thank everyone who watches our videos, who shares our videos, everyone who prays for us. I really enjoy lately a lot of the comments and questions that have been coming in. We have a lot of those. Keep those coming. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel on YouTube, please do that. That really would be nice. I want to also thank our sponsors. I want to thank uh, Guerrero CPA, Guerrero Law, and Trade Show Displays. And I also want to thank all of you who support us financially. There's a lot of you lately who've come in anonymously, and I think that's kind of cute, but I want to thank you so much. It means a lot. Um, today, we're going to talk about, we're going on with our, our uh, family dynamics, and we're going to talk about single parenting today. So I brought on a guest, somebody I've known for about 23 years now, and her name is Lisa Sale. Hi. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. And um, Lisa is a single parent. She's raised three boys. And um, that always, that's probably never really easy. <laughs> but boy, it was fun. And um, so anyway, I want to, um, as we welcome her, I wanted her to talk about, like, say, the early days when she first became a single parent and what it was like. Hi. Um, well, at the time, I was, I was, pretty broken. You couldn't tell on the outside though because I was I was self-medicating with alcohol and uh, I hadn't found the church yet. I was brought up always as a believer. I, I mean, I, I was brought up a Catholic, so I've always known God, but I've never had a relationship with God until uh, two dear friends brought me to CBC, Community Bible yeah. Church, in February 15th, 2003. It was a Saturday and um, my life changed greatly, and so I got divorced in 2001 or 2002 and was lost and stuff for a couple years, and then uh, once God got planted in me at CBC, um, I dove into all sorts of classes, and uh, I joined a class called Single Parent Family Ministries, and that's where I met some wonderful friends that are still friends of mine uh, right now. Shout out to Judy. Um, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, my son's got, I got my kids involved at, the, uh, at classes there at CBC. We went to church with Robert Emmett there. And uh, my journey began and uh, it got better and better. And then by the grace and glory of God and CBC and Celebrate Recovery, I got sober in uh, March 21st, 2012. And then my journey got even better. So one thing I could say about, about you is that I observe everything even from afar i observe and so forth but i noticed something you you've gone down and up and down and up the hills you know mm -hmm. in the valleys and, mm -hmm. and had struggles mm -hmm. but one thing i've always noticed about you is that you've always had a goal to do better even when you weren't doing better right thank you and that yes. was something i've always noticed that you still wanted to to reach for the gold. You still yes. wanted to do better, be better, find that that pulls you out of yes. where you were always. And even though I see you sometimes not going up, you're still looking up. Where is it I can grab onto? And that's something I've always seen in you. And I give glory to God on that because I want to make him happy. I want to be what he made me to be, not what I, I want to be. It's not about me. It's about being the best I can be for God. And there's going to be struggles. I mean, we're going to have struggles for the rest of our lives until God takes us home. Uh -huh. But I, I just live for Him. And sometimes I struggle and sometimes I pick everything back up. And, 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 and I've got, there's beautiful people in this world like you and Susan that, you know, you, you stay um, more connected and you're not able to, you keep your calm. Just like, you know, what just happened uh, coming here for me. I thank God I called you. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I, I want to be like that, but I'm not that way. It's not in my personality yet. But I'm striving to be that way when I go through storms, when I go through troubles, that I don't get off beam. That's okay. I'm married to that. <laughs> <laughs> my, he lo he Susan, loves you, Susan. Susan's going to kill me. But uh, yeah, he loves you, Susan. Yeah, she's a, she's a ball of anxiety and stress, <laughs> okay. and her middle name is worry. You know, it's just <laughs> I think it might be a female thing. I don't know. I don't know, but I don't so know. when you're calling all oh, stress, it's like, oh, it's okay, it's all right. It's, yeah. 
<laughs> Thank you, Alan. <laughs> it's funny. Well, where the sun rises, I don't know where that is. What? <laughs> that was good. Oh. But anyway, um, so tell me, I mean, I, I'm a product of, of a divorced family. Okay. okay, so I was raised by my mom and my brothers and sisters, five of us. And, and at one point in time, some of my brothers were raised and my sister raised by my mom. Some of them raised by my father. Some, uh, um, I never was raised by my father after nine years old. He left, that was it always my mom and so I was a product of that and I understood that and okay. and my mom became an alcoholic and we had no church upbringing at all okay and um, so I started going to, to church when I was 14 because of a friend of mine's mother who drug us to church I basically lived with a friend okay. and their father left and they were under divorce and she was raising four boys wow. so here we are with four boys and a girl on my family and there's four boys over there and here we are, we kind of connected, all of us connected, oh. and they became family. And because and she wanted to go to church because she wanted counseling because of her depressed, mm. I'm alone, I'm raising four boys, five now, mm. <laughs> you know. And <clears throat> I didn't even want to become a Christian, but she was taking us and we would go every other week to Sunday school. We wouldn't go to church in Sunday school. and. The, when I was 16 and became a Christian, it, it all changed for me. But then about several months later, I moved out of my home in my car. And so I actually was raised more or less by my pastor. Okay. So I had a different thing going on. So I, I, don't, um, I, don't, I don't know how to put that together in a Christian network. However, when I was single, my uh, my nephew came to live with me when he was about 11 or 12, and he lived with me till he was 19. And so I raised my nephew, oh. and that was interesting. Um, How old were you when you were raising your nephew? I don't know, 40. Okay. Maybe 35, 40, 35 okay. to 45, something like that. Um, and I was living in San Antonio when it started. I was going to Trinity Baptist Church here, and then we left and went to Hawaii, and we lived there for a few years, and then. He went back to California. So, but looking at families, because I know you and I talked real briefly, you know, in a lot of the United States, and this is probably true in Canada as well, a lot of single uh, parenting homes are a product of divorce. However, in speaking to people who are in Moldova or Ukraine or places that are very poor around the world, they're raised, they have single parent homes, but they have, they're still married. And what happens is they're so poor. For example, in Moldova, I'm very mm. they make about 250 to $300 a month income. They need at least 1300 to live. So what happens is the father will leave the country and go work somewhere oh. else for maybe 10, 11 months and send money back. Oh, okay. And so they're raised by their mother Sometimes both parents go and they're raised by uh, different family members. So it's really, you know, when we talk about single parenting, it looks very different in your other gotcha. countries than it does here. So we're speaking to all the world at this point. But we want to talk about what it is to serve Jesus, what it is to bring up your kids in, in, in Jesus yes. while you're a single parent. So talk about mm -hmm. your your testimony as a single parent, basically coming to Jesus mm. and bringing your kids and learning all you can and having all the joys and hardship mm. as you go through it. Give me your testimony. Okay. Um, I, there's no way in the world I'd be here today uh, had had God not led me to CBC. And it's, it, He, God leads us. He leads us every single day. He's His arms are always spread out for us. It's our decision to come to Him. And so I'm grateful to God and I, that I was obedient that I went to CBC and fell in love with it the night I went there. And, had, and, and I've been at CBC ever since, and I've been involved in many, many groups. And my sons came to CBC with me. Every time I was at church, I would take them to child care um, because they were um, seven, eight, nine um, when we started going. Okay, and we got went regularly till they were basically in high school. 
Um, and then they turn into teenagers and things change a little bit. But the, the foundation and the grounding was there and will always be there with them. Uh, but as we know, the devil tries to to break us and and so but God is in us he's in us and I look up to him all the time and rely on him and I can't imagine how my life would be had Stephanie and Micah Norwood not taken me to CBC that Saturday night I would probably not be alive or I'd be dead inside my sons would definitely not be who they are today Um, they got baptized um, at CBC on my birthday uh, in 2005 and my precious wonderful dad uh, who lived in Dallas happened to be here it was outstanding and uh, beautiful memories uh, Bible stu- I got involved in so many Bible studies I got involved in a lot of classes um, you know the Bible is so important and uh, knowing scripture and uh, relying on God's word is so important uh, hugely important to me hugely is listening to Christian music. I, I listen to Christian music all the time. You know, before CBC, I listened to, you know, 80s music or 70s music or something like that and not say anything bad about that music. But God speaks to me through music. And uh, just like the movie with the Jim Carrey in it where he says, God, should give me signs, give me signs, I need signs. And everywhere he's going, there were signs from God, but he was so looking forward or so busy that he was paying no attention to the signs. God gives us signs and sometimes it's in music. Sometimes it's in people such as you, Alan. Um, and, and of course in church and mostly in the Bible. Um, but I, when I go through struggles, it's so much easier, uh, and so much better. And, uh, the way it's supposed to be relying on God and turning to my godly friends and getting godly advice and not world advice. Because the world, as we know, is filling us up with a bunch of garbage. You know, it's interesting. You said, you know, there's give me signs. That the whole thing was. Fun. It's funny <laughs> because when I first called you some time ago and asked you about coming on the program, you know, I'm really busy and I know I have a I have a house I got to clean on this day and this and this and that. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you stop. Hold it. And what did you tell me? Because <laughs> I said you're July third. I need need you. What did you tell me? Uh, I- I just I said okay, Alan. I'm not going to I'm not going to turn this down. This is a sign. This is definitely a sign. I need to be obedient to God. And what was the sign? Uh, remind me. The car in front of you. Oh yes, oh yes. It, it said July third. <laughs> it's the, 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 the car in front of me. The license plate said July third. That's right. And he 24. was taking. Twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yes, it was it was a new car uh, a sign, the paper sign, and it said July third, twenty four. You're right, and I and yes, thank you for reminding me. Sorry, y'all, I forgot that. I'm getting older. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I find that really interesting because yes. you just stopped everything, every excuse, every no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We'll see. I have uh-huh. to look into it to hold it. Uh-huh. No, I, God has just spoke to me. Yeah. On this license plate. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes, <laughs> right. and I liked it. That's about you. I love this because. <laughs> Sometimes we are blinding ourselves yeah. and not looking around to be available for the sign yeah, God absolutely. puts in front of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And like, I'm too busy to go to church. I mean, I, I, I've got a job I need to do. Oh, I don't, I, this is my only day off. Uh, God is only asking for an hour or hour and a half of our time per week. If we give more, fantastic, but at least give him that. Actually, he's asking for a day. Yeah. Right, right, Sunday. Oh, yeah. The whole day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, at le- but at least an, at least an hour and a half to go to church, you know, get up and go to church. And it's so funny, Alan, whenever, I mean, there's days that I get pooped and I just wanted to stay in bed. But I find and I thank God every day when I, at the end of the day, <clears throat> when I actually get myself up and I get out and about and when, I, when I'm not working or even when I'm working and, and, and all the people that bless me. Because I got out out, uh, out and about, and then also how I blessed others at the gas station or at Kohl's or at the grocery store, just stirring up a conversation. You know, had I stayed home, those opportunities would have been missed. Yeah. I want to read a couple of scriptures. I think, it, you know, I want to take off on this. And one is in Proverbs 22, 6, and it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart yes. from it. 
And uh, the second one I'm talking about is in Psalms 127, 3 and 4. It says, Behold, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the, in the hand of a warrior, so are children mm. of one's youth. So you have three boys, okay? And here you are. How do you frustrating deal with them as God has given to you as a reward? <sighs> such a gift they're such a blessing they're my life i mean god first and then my boys and it's just i can't be more thankful and grateful and even in the times of hardship and there are times you know um and like right now i'm going through a little bit of one with one of my sons and all i know is that god's God's got him. God's got the situation. God's got everything. And it's it's to make us stronger and better. Uh, we've got to rely on him no matter what. And and I, like I said to you earlier, I'm not, I'm not perfect at that. But in the long run, if, if it takes a day, if it takes a week, if it takes a month, we can see his hands and in, in, in his work in the progress. Uh, but uh, they are their own beings. They have their own journey. They're going to have their own testimonies. They have their own problems. And as a mother, I want to help them. But I have to realize the best help is God. i got to get out of the way sometimes. Well, even in, in your responsibility, our responsibility as parents is to raise them in the Lord. Yes, absolutely. And I talk about God all the time to them. I have talked about God to them since they were little. You know, not just leaving it up to the church to talk to them about it. But they see it in me. They see it in us. Everybody see We, we can preach God, and, but we've got to show God. Mm -hmm. We have to be a witness for God to those around us. We can have the stickers on our cars and the buttons on our shirts, but if we're not acting it, we're being hypocritical. So it happens at home. And my sons have seen it. Through the hardships, as you've seen, I've gone on through the ups and downs, the loss of my mom, my dad, my brother, my dog, situations of all sorts. And my sons have seen that I've been grounded. Not that I'm perfect, but that they see that I keep my eyes on God. So I'm going to bring up your brother. Which, which is one? Just, well, the one that passed away. Okay. Because, and this is totally off the fly here. Okay. Because I remember when he passed away, you were you wrote things and you were devastated. Now, how did that enter in in your devastation as a parent to your children? Um, I can only imagine what they witnessed through seeing their mom. Um, I, the only way I got through that, Alan, was of course God and my friends. I turned to my friends and prayer works. So many people were praying. Um, my sons didn't know Jeff very well. Um, Jeff lived in Dallas. Um, and Jeff spent uh, the majority of his life in prison because he, was, he, he had addictive behaviors mm -hmm. and, and, and hard, hardships in his upbringing. Um, but again, they, my sons saw the strength that I got through Jeff's death <clears throat> and mom and dad um, because of God, all because of God. Church, God, Christian music, Christian friends, yeah. period. This is not just lip talk. It's the truth. Yeah. So there's a passage here. There's actually two I want to bring up again. I have a lot of passages. Love them. You know, in the Bible, I was looking up different parental passages, and there are hundreds of them. There are really a lot of them. There's some of them I'm not going to bring up because it doesn't apply, but some of them are just amazing. And some of them I didn't even put together. For example, as we parent, you know, it, it's not easy. We don't really get a good handbook on this. Mm -mm. The mm -hmm. handbooks, you, you go to the, the bookstore mm -hmm. and you have a, a book that says one thing. You have For another sons. book that says a different thing. And another book right. that denies both of these and picks a different one. And it's like, really, what do you do? And the scripture is really good. But Jesus said something in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. And, and I like this scripture. I actually teach on this a lot, the whole 28 to 30. But he says this. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, mm -hmm. and I will give you yes. rest. 
And there's another one that goes right with it in Psalms 147.3. It says, he heals the brokenhearted mm -hmm. and binds up their sorrows. Yes. And the two of those together, I think, are just weight lifters for yes. single parents. Yes. For all parents, actually. Yes. But yes. for all of us. Yeah. All of us. So in this, because I've watched you a lot. And I watched you in pain, and I watched you in joy, and I watched you talk, 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 talk. <laughs> you're you're animated a lot. Yes. <laughs> so, but in the pain, and I and I take this, and it's like, Father, bring that to her. So when we're struggling, and you know, how is it that we really? How is it that you really take on your brokenness? to say, Jesus, or do you sometimes forget or not do the fact that you need to give it to Jesus to heal? Both. Okay, Both. talk about that. Both. Uh, I'm a work in progress mm -hmm. until God takes me home. And uh, pride probably gets in the side sometimes. Uh, where, And then sometimes I just just veg, just sit and veg where I need to be bringing out the Bible or, or doing what have you. Uh, but uh, phone calls, uh, praying, 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 and there's no right or wrong way to pray. And uh, I was you know, brought up a Catholic as a little girl, and there's they've got their way of praying, but there's no right and wrong way. Just if we want to say Jesus, Jesus. Um, and I sit here today after going through some struggles the last three weeks, and it, it was pretty hard the last three weeks. And I come here today to, to serve the Lord and be honored by your invitation and to do this and hope that uh, I can be of some help to someone else out there. Uh, it's the best thing in the world to be a parent. To be a single parent is a privilege. We're not a single parent because we've always got the Father. I mean, God, I, I'm not single. I've got God, you know. And my sons, let me, I want to shout out to them, James, Matthew, and David. They're my life, and I love them greatly, and I wish only the best. I pray for them all the time, um, and I will continue to do so. And prayer works. It works. Um, ask many people that have gone through struggles uh, how they got through it, and it's through prayer and love and the, and the trust and faith in God. So what brought you from the point of <clears throat> shouldering everything, breaking down, to where it was easier for you to say, okay, Jesus, you need to heal this. You need to take it from me. All that I've learned from CBC, from Community Bible Church, and, and going to single parent family uh, ministry class uh, where Lee Malden uh, you know, was taught it. And I met Jay Moeller and Kelly Moeller and all the people that I've met, Paige, and all the people God have brought into my life. I call those divine appointments. Uh, absolutely. And and some of them are still in my life and some of them were just mom, uh, you know, for a moment or for a season. Um, but they were part of my journey and they can lift me up and I can call them anytime. But it's the people that God has brought into my life that has helped me to be able to deal with it. Even if I just deal with it alone or stay alone, they're still in me and with me. And God is in me always. And I just have a turnabout, a complete turnabout in my life as of February 15, 2003. And it's only gotten stronger as I've continued my walk with God in the church. I uh, facilitate, celebrate recovery, um, which is for everyone that has hurts, habits, and hangups. And it's for divorcees, it's for single parents, it's for people with grief, it's for everyone to come. And all these things God has led me to, and I've been obedient to going to. I could have chosen not to do these things and not allow these wonderful people that God has brought into my life to be a part of my life. I wouldn't be who I am today had these people not come into my life and me to be able to be back with them as friends or a relationship with them. Good. You know, it's interesting. Um, I think <clears throat> when we talk about parenting and we talk about single parenting or, or uh, sometimes it's just even a, a, another family raising these parents, uh, I look at places like Moldova, places like Ukraine, mm -hmm. where you where you have the lack of a parent, mm -hmm. and and it and it's hard. Um, I've seen where where people can't afford to feed themselves, and it's just and really no water. Oh, when, oh, oh. go ahead. The, the, I mean, there. What we are so blessed. We are so spoiled. We are so privileged in the United States. And what the countries go through, the, the suffering and the, 
starvation and the dirty water. It's heartbreaking. And the war and all that. You know, uh, I want so much more to be able to be more to others and to help. Because we are just so privileged. Yeah. And that, that's, that's an honorable statement right there. Uh, and I think that more of us need to take that on that kind of a, a, a walk. Um, I think that as, as I see people as parents, I, I, um, I, so, I so identify with the fact that it's not an easy job. You know, it's just not an easy job. Even when the children leave, sometimes mm -hmm. that's even harder. <laughs> you know, what do you think? Uh, you, you have that now in your life. Oh, yes. Yes. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Boy, I didn't want to let my boys leave. I mean, I, I, they, they left. My oldest and my youngest moved out um, eight years ago, nine years ago. And <laughs> I didn't want to let them go. I mean, I was, I was in their business. I was in touch with them every day. I probably drove them absolutely nuts. I went to see them at their work. I went to see them at their apartments. Oh, God bless my sons, James and David. I'm blessed. Dave, uh, Matthew still lives with me. Thank you, Matthew. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's, a pro it's been a process. To be a single mom and then be in your whole thing, you know, for so many years, and then to move out, I, it, it, take, it took some adjusting, Alan. It really did. And, and uh, thank you, James and David, for putting up with me. Um, but I keep them in prayer, and, and I, I go to meetings, and I lift it to the Lord. And it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds, but it's a, it's a part of life, and it's part of their lives. And yeah. they've, got to, they've got to figure things out. Um. Several years ago, a long time ago, I, I dated a lady who had two children. Um, their names are Stacy and Ryan. And we stopped dating, but I kept a kind of a relationship with the two kids. And then I moved, there's here in San Antonio, I moved it back to Hawaii and kind of was lived my own life and so forth. Came back here and I was renting a, a, a mobile home and one of the the boy, Ryan, called me up and, oh. and said, hey, you know, I'm going to go to school here and uh, need a place to live. Hey, I have a bedroom that's free. Oh, you know, we wow. rented out. So we kind of lived together. We came really close. And he came. And he all of a sudden is like, you're like my dad. Oh, my gosh. You know? That's beautiful. And uh, these two kids are, are like my own children. And their mother just passed away a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. And so I was been up in Dallas and talking with them and making sure that their emotional state is, is healthy because that's that's a hard time thing sometimes when your parent passes away mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you've not been in good relationship or you've had a mm -hmm. you you've stopped talking or whatever it might be to the other parent mm -hmm. yes yeah so it's really difficult so yep. I made a, a decision to go up there stay up there and, oh, and do all what that. a blessing you were so <clears throat> um, and and it's interesting um, in that scenario, she remained single for a long time, and then she married, and his her husband passed away. But but um, they're they're really neat kids, and I, I really like her, her in their late thirties <laughs> kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you know then I have Susan, and you know and she has two kids, and when her her uh, her older one Brian went off to college and. Boy, she cried mm. and cried. And then when Lauren was going, it was like, now it's like no more kids. And she was, what do I do? Mm. <laughs> uh huh. How are you like that? Was it well, I am so grateful for my job. I clean houses for a living, and I'm so grateful for my job. Again, my clients are not just clients. They are family. Uh, and all my clients are Christians. So I, I have meetings every day <laughs> when I clean people's houses. So and actually, you don't have a job. You have a business. Correct. 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 Thank so you for the correction. I've ever known you. Yes, sir. You've been entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. You know, you you've done that. What well, years ago? What did you do? What was that internet, internet store? Business. Yeah. In, yeah. Mallforyou.com, but yeah. it's no longer going. Okay. Yes. <laughs> You're always entrepreneurial. Got it. You know, which I think is a better thing than going to work somewhere from nine to five. Hello. Yeah, yeah, because you get yeah. to, you get to see more of your kids. Yes, you get to set help. your own hours. Whoop whoop whoop. Yes, yes. and you're yes. more of a parent. Yeah, and you see, I, I started. That's exactly correct. I started uh, when the internet business has started kind of 
flowing, going down, I started substitute teaching. Th thanks to my precious son, David, he asked me, Mom, why don't you be a teacher? And so I substitute taught at, at Longs Creek Elementary for a little while. And then I began uh, working, you know, doing make readies for realtors and then cleaning houses for a living. So thank you for that. I don't, I don't give myself that credit. Um, and, and again, it's beautiful because I get to spread the word each day and talk to my clients and they talk to me, they counsel me, I counsel them. It's not just going in there and cleaning their house. And another thing I wanted to say earlier, please, is that as you know, having multiple siblings and having multiple uh, children, stepchildren and what have you, adopted ones, uh, the ones you just mentioned, uh, each, and every, each and every person has a different personality and each and every person has a different need. And I have three sons, they're from the same mom and dad, but they each are different and they each have a different need. And what you did, what you've done for those adult children, uh, is I, all I can see is the hand of God in that, that what you are doing for them, being the father that they need, being that remote role model. My youngest son, David, uh, by the grace of God, has this wonderful boss that he works for, uh, and he just said that he wants to be the father figure to David, and that brought tears to my eyes, because that's all I pray for my sons, is that they have wonderful mentors, wonderful people around them uh, from God, and that they let those people in their lives. You know, and I, and I think that's what you just said, I think is, is really important, because when I was, you know, a kid, I didn't have a dad. He was in Canada. I'm in California. And growing up, and, and I really, my mom was gone a lot. I mean, she worked all day. She went to school at night or mm. vice versa. And so basically, I got to run the streets. Oh. And so I did my own thing. I got in my own mischief, in trouble, never, never really got arrested and all that kind of stuff because we always evaded the law <laughs> okay all right <laughs> so my my mom my poor mom you know i was we were at a group meeting one time and i was going to tell these stories about about something things i did as a teenager and i looked at oh my mom's here never mind and she uh. happened to say oh that's okay i know everything you did I said, no you didn't oh. Mom. Just, oh yes i do just go ahead so i started telling some of these stories uh -huh. my mom started crying she goes i have a terrible son <laughs> 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 now she's like, don't tell me anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I, I have told uh, my son James, uh, there's a lot of things I don't really want my son to know about me, and there's a lot of things that they've done that I don't necessarily need to know. Yeah. You know, it's okay. My parents, if they still were alive, there was things I don't think that they needed to know because I want them to still love me and think that I'm a great thing. So, <laughs> you know, things we can keep to ourselves. God always knows, but, you know, and he forgives us. We need to forgive our ourselves. My best friend in California, he uh, he has uh, he had a son and an adopted son, and one of the things he's always he got he was kind of like crazy of somewhat. Then all of a sudden, when he had his first boy, he was mm. like, "I've got to grow up." Uh, you know, he was like uh -huh. got serious about yeah. I got to change the way I think, act, and everything because now I'm responsible yes. for this person. You would hope you would hope a daddy and a mommy would feel that way. Yeah, and some as, don't. And as we as we uh, grew together, well, lived together, not lived, I didn't live with them, but as we spent time together, it was more of him figuring out what he was supposed to be as a father. Him figuring out, well, what's really important. You know, I just I don't want him to be maimed. I don't want him to go down the mm -hmm. wrong road. Mm -hmm. So as long as he's healthy and so forth, et cetera, et cetera, you know, he's like. Phew, I've done well. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, that, that seems to be a, a concern, at least some, some people I know, and some people don't really care as long as, you know, they're home and they don't really give two cents worth their children. They don't put that effort into mm -hmm. their kids. And look what, what the world is becoming and, and what kids are going through because they're yeah. neglected. Yeah. They're neglected and they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. And then, like you said, and when you were younger, you know, your mom was busy and did working and providing a living for you, for your y'all. Um, and you went out and did mischief. Well, that was that was a while back ago. Just imagine the mischief that the kids go through now, the the all that they're exposed to. It's it's heart wrenching, heart wrenching. What well, if those through. kids today did what I did back then, they'd be in prison. I mean, oh, what we see did, that's what I'm saying. The sign of times is it, it's yeah. it's so different. Yeah, we we it's, got away with stuff that you wouldn't get away with today. And back then, you can run the streets easier as a kid and not... Be safer. Yeah, not, be safer, yeah. And not hearing shotguns in you the next street over. You that stuff, yeah. Yeah. But. Now, another thing is, too, Ellen, I wanted to mention is something very important for all of us to know is that each of us, 
every single one of us have a different history and have a different back background. And, you know, some people can't give because they didn't get. And then some people can't love because they weren't loved. And, and we all need help. We all need, and the best help is God. And the best therapy is the Bible. You know, and we can't get what we haven't gotten. And so when people are hurting, I told my kid, I would tell my kids when they were younger in elementary school, if someone's being a bully or someone's being mean, they may not have been fed that morning. They may have heard their parents fighting. Their parents may not have been home all night. We don't know their story. We all have a different story. And we need to be godly to each other to the best of our ability. We can't fix anybody. Yeah. But we can show love. You know, I think that, that's really huge what you just said because we grow up as children without a parent, just one parent. We grow up and we find the mischief. We find the stuff to do because we're able. Because there's Mommy no, didn't know. There's no guidance. Know. There's no guidance. Absolutely. And I really, and I don't know much anymore about uh, let's say the Big Brother, Big Sister. Okay. Yeah. I remember they were a strong organization one time. I don't hear. They're a lot still about around, them. but they're not as big, not as so. Exposed. I was fortunate. I was fortunate that my pastor took me in, and I lived with him, and then he became my, my surrogate father, and mm -hmm. he's my mentor. And today, you know, he's eighty years old. I think he is, and I, and I tell him, you can't go. I, I still need you. Yeah. I still need you. You're, what a blessing. You know, I need you so much, and he's he's got wisdom. And so when mm -hmm. I uh, and when I need help, I get on that phone and I call him right off the bat. Hey, I need help. I got a situation. He's still that to me. See what God gave you. Yeah, and I think that wow. when we talk about homes in the United States where you have separated parents, and mm -hmm. a lot of times the father doesn't come around. A lot. Sometimes the mother doesn't come around. Correct. I know a situation like that where, you know, it's been like that too. But a lot of times they have no father because he just doesn't come around. He might come around once every other year, every every five years, you know. Then all of a sudden he's there when you grow up and you leave your mother because you're an adult. And all of a sudden he's there all the time. And it's like, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's and then you have situations, like I said, in Moldova where you have the parent had to leave. And so you don't have that parent to draw from. So what we have is a not just a society here in the United States, but we have a society worldwide yeah. of kids growing up, becoming 20, 21, and so forth, and getting married without the understanding of how to yep. be a husband or a wife yep. or a parent. And then all of a sudden, within three to seven years, that marriage goes south. We have a divorce. And it's like this because they don't have the they don't have the example of how to work out those problems. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and this you don't is, give up just because of this or that. And this is a worldwide epidemic. Yeah. Divorce this, is too easy. It is. The there there are a couple of missionaries that I that are just the closest that can be to me. Uh, Radu and Luda. They've been on my program recently. Um, in fact, they were on when we did this family about ministry because they did it for ministers. And we talked a lot about that. He reaches out into his country about family ministry because he is so drawn to trying to help people understand relationships and who is at the center of relationship with Jesus is. And he tries to help that through the children in the school, mm. the teachers, the parents, all around. That family ministry is a huge thing because divorce is so high in yeah. Moldova. Well, it's no, not just Moldova. It's, it's all everywhere. over the world. And, and it's really... Uh, really amazing. I even had one guy who called me, or wrote to me, I'm sorry, I think it's Indonesia area, and he just became a believer. And there's a lot of talk going around about more than one wife in this, you know, mm -hmm. through the internet right now. Mm -hmm. So he's married to three women. Mm -hmm. And he said, and he wrote and he says, I I just became a believer. I just became a Christian, but I have three wives. Do I need to divorce two of them? I said, absolutely not. I says it doesn't teach that against multiple marriages, but it does teach against divorce. And you marry these three women, and you need to take care of them. Okay. So, so it's really okay. interesting how people yeah. don't know the yeah. scripture. People don't know family development and dynamics, and what are they going to television? Yeah, social media. Social yeah. media, which so much is. A and lie. sometimes they're going to friends, like, oh, I'm having a hard time uh, with this uh -huh. with my my 
marriage partner and I don't know what to do. And they well, don't have a good marriage themselves. And they might say, yeah. well, you're really unhappy. God wants Divor you to be happy. Go ahead and divorce. divorce. Yeah. And it's like, where, where are these people? And they claim to be Christians. Where's morals? Where, not only that, where's your biblical principles? Yeah. You know, are you really following the biblical teaching? Right. Of course not. Well, people don't know what they don't know. Some, a lot of people aren't brought up in the church. A lot of people don't know God. A lot, there's a lot of false prophets out there. There's so much false information out there. To, you, know, you, you can search for things on the Internet, and you can find whatever you want to find if you want to find an answer. Yeah. Okay, and the answer still could be wrong. It could be wrong. Okay, if you want to believe there's not a God, find it. Does God exist? There'll be, no, he doesn't. Yeah. You know, and if you want to be that gullible to believe it, you're, you're, you're searching the wrong places. And people are going to churches, they're going to pastors, uh, and they're just watching pr things from what they want to hear. Exactly. It yes. Doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, they're not necessarily looking for the absolute truth. truth. Yeah. They're trying to find the truth that fits what they want. Exactly. Which yeah. is not going to be true. And they discard anything else that might go against what they want to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but I think you're right. I think a lot of people, they're, they grow up without love. They grow up yeah. without, without being, feel the feeling of being wanted. So when being they get hugged, into a relationship, a, they don't know how to love because mm -hmm. they haven't been loved. At least they don't know how to love biblically. They don't know. How they don't to, know what love is. Exactly. They don't know what love. Yeah. And then it's insane. Like, hello, have you been to restaurants? Have you seen the mom, the dad, the son and daughter? They're all on their phones. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hello. That's you know, the world. That's the normal world we live in now. You know what's amazing is when I go to, let's say, uh, like these Brazilian restaurants that are highly expensive. Yes. And entertaining. Here's the people on, on and they're here. They are like this to each other, and they're not even talking. I'm thinking you're spending hundred and fifty dollars on your phone, and while they're doing their thing, the, 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 exactly, they're doing their yeah, they're doing their. Throwing the thing in your mouth, and you're missing the whole thing. And then you got kids, and they may be throwing their food or hitting the table or on their phone themselves, uh -huh. and you have no interaction. You don't, they don't understand the dynamics, the dynamics of a family. Yeah. They're not being yeah. taught at home. No. And see, what's so beautiful also is um, we uh, at Community Bible Church, there's a, there's a uh, ministry called uh, Celebrate Recovery, and it's for everybody that has hurts, habits, and hangups. And then there's one for, it's called the landing for middle schoolers and high schoolers. Mm -hmm. And then there's also one for elementary school students. So we're teaching uh, through the church, God, yeah. and um, how to turn to God when you have problems at a young age. Yeah. Okay. So we've got to get them when they're young. They need to learn these things when they're young from a broken family, from a divorced family, from a work parents, to know that God is always there and when your mom and dad may not be at the time. Yeah. When I was, um, when I used to attend CBC and, and I was very involved in the ministry yes, there. Yeah. And, in the uh, choir. And I was yeah. in the choir and, and Ray Jones was, the, um, yeah. Love Ray Jones. A man, amazing man. And he, a man, uh, Andrea. Uh, when he was in charge of the music ministry there and he had choirs from the early childhood. Yes. On up. But what I, what I saw in this is that these children were learning about Jesus. It wasn't just that they're singing right. and got to sing. They were learning about Jesus. Yes. They were learning how to serve him. And eventually they were learning how to minister. Yes. As they became older. Yep. And this was something. Oh. And then they had also had, a, I don't know if they, and then they stopped it all there yep. at the church. Yep. But they also had something, I don't know if they still have it there called Awanas, which is the same as caravans in some churches or the same as Boy Scouts if, on the secular end of it. But, okay. it, but it taught, the, the communication of kids and it taught biblical principles and you learn how to live as a, as a believer. And you had a lot of kids here from broken homes. A lot would just, they had parent. mentors. Well, yes. Godly mentors. And we, I think as single parents, we need those mentors to help oh, out our yes. children. All, all, all kids need it. All, all adults need it. You've got your mentor. Mm -hmm. We all need mentors, but kids especially. <clears throat> and, Yes, as you said, single parent families, the kids need yeah. so much. We I, need to be more involved. I remember when I was a single parent raising my nephew and, and I worked, you know, I worked a 10 to 6 job is what it was. You know, my nephew came from a home that uh, his mom was rarely ever there. He learned when he came to me, he learned he already knew how to cook. I'm like, 
Oh. I felt two things. I felt, well, this is a blessing for me, but it's terrible for him. He okay. shouldn't have to know how to cook at 11 years old, and that's how he had to live because he didn't have another way out. So basically, he had he developed this, which so, was helpful for me because the days that I had to work, let's say it was Easter vacation or something like that, and I wasn't there all day, he could cook lunch for himself. And so, I see. So it was really was a blessing. Really a blessing for me. It was, however, I didn't like it for him. Yeah. And I, I wanted. But he knew he knew no difference. So it probably he probably enjoyed it, and that right. really is an attribute. To well, be I wanted able to him to, to be a, a, a child. I wanted him to sure. be a boy. Absolutely. And I wanted him to, to do that. And I got him yeah. involved in church. I wanted him involved in the, the kids' departments of doing things and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. He and Ryan, the boy I talked about earlier, became friends, and they started doing things a lot. So that was a real blessing. In, that I looked for stuff that where I couldn't fit in and I couldn't be there, that I could find places, whether it be a parent or be a church activity area yeah. or a friend that he can get involved in. And I knew nothing about raising kids. I mean, at this point, not, not like that. I just had to figure out mm -hmm. what, what would I want just like when yep. I became a teacher, you know. And There's it, no handbook, Alan. Right. I mean, there are, but they con contradict each other. Yeah, and, and I had and I had such negative things about the way way a lot of kids are, are taught and brought up, mm -hmm. um, and I felt like you know there needs to be a better a better focus than what I what I came mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. There has to be better focus than what I knew, and I just figure out well, what would I want? that would be appropriate to honor Jesus. And that's the that's the direction I, I took. Yeah. So. Yeah, me too. I did the same. Yeah, and a lot of things too, as my kids would grow, were growing up at a certain age, I would remember where I was at, at that age. And uh, see, I was from broken family, big time. My dad was married five times. My mom was married three. And I, <clears throat> at 13 years old, my stepmom, my dad's third wife, Rand, um, the mother of my youngest brother, Jesse, um, she asked me, she showed me a glass that was, the water was right here. I didn't know what she was doing. She showed me a glass and she said, Lisa, what is this? I said, that's a glass half full. And she said that, that showed her where my personality was. Okay. It's not half empty. It's half full. I'm an optimist, except for sometimes when I'm in a storm and sometimes <laughs> when I, and sometimes when I deal with it myself. Yeah. And I don't surrender. Or you're driving the wrong way. You and get lost stuff. and my phone locks up. <laughs> my phone locked up two times on my way here, y'all. The devil was really working on me. And bless Alan's heart, he calmed me down, Jiminy Cricket. But, but I didn't want what I had been brought up with for my sons. Okay. I tried to make my marriage work and so did my ex-husband. It just didn't work. We were just... Pew, yeah. You know, and, and I have not I have not been in a relationship since I've been divorced. Hello, that's been 23 years. Uh, uh, but God's been working on me. I don't want the woman that I was with John to go into a relationship with another man. He doesn't deserve that because I need to be well. And God is working on me. He's working on me every day. And I want to be worked on every day. And I want to strive to be better every day. I'll never be perfect because only Jesus is. Well, and, and that brings up a whole different, whole different scenario. A lot of single... Parents, they don't want to be alone. They don't like being alone. It is very lonely to be alone. It's about the kids for me. It's about my but sons even, for me. Even that, it's hard sometimes to raise the children on your own. You would like somebody else. I had people from the church. So a lot of people. I'm sorry. They're looking for somebody. Yes, sir. So yes. The the wrong thing they're, they're doing doing is they're looking. Oh, this person will be good for me. I like that one. Mm. This one. So God, bring me somebody. And that's their prayer is, God, bring me somebody, bring me somebody, bring me somebody. And I tell these single people, that's the wrong prayer. That's the wrong way to look at it. You need to be doing and to asking God, make me the person you want me to be yes. so that I am ready. Yes. So when the person comes around, yes. I am ready and prepared for that person. Yes. And that's really the right thing. Yes. And all the while praying that the person that God has picked out for whoever you are, for you, that that person is being worked on and is welcoming the, the changes and the improvements. Yeah. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. We don't want to be in the wrong relationship. And I did not want my sons to go through step parents, a stepdad like I went through. It just, it's just not, 
you know, stepmothers and stepfathers and this and that and different relationships. And my my mom's focus, my dad's, they weren't on me. It was yeah. on their relationships. And, and, you know, they say that not only in the United States, but here and other places that the second marriages. 75%. 70% divorce rate. Yep. And so here you are at a 49 to 51% divorce rate, first marriage, 70% second marriage. Well, why do you think that's happening? Hello. We're bringing our baggage into the second relationship right. We're not rather than healing and letting God work on us yeah. to change and transform our lives. Correct. We're looking for somebody to fix that. Instead to fill of, that hole. Exactly. Instead of letting God fill that hole. That is exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, going from one relation to another, like you said, that's not fixing yourself. Uh -uh. Yeah, I think it's wrong. Also, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna just jump here and jump back. Okay. But I've heard some people tell people, for example, let's say you're single now, you're divorced or single or widowed or whatever, but you're raising children, and there's somebody that has to tell you how to live. <laughs> you know, you can't get married because you have children. It would be selfish, and you can't do that until they grow up and leave. Well, that's terrible advice. That's uh, not even right. It's right. none of their place to do that. Exactly. But there's a lot of people doing that. Yeah. And we need to pray for those who are single and, and raising children. We need to pray for those who have families and you have a, a spouse that's abroad bringing money back and you don't have them to help raise your children. We need to pray for them. Yes. I think yes. it's so important that we do that. And if you're single, we, you need to search your heart and let God transform you, change yes. you, and take the baggage or any baggage that you may have and lift it from you yes. so that you may be complete in Him yes. so that when somebody does come along, you're not giving them a whole bunch of baggage so you end up in divorce as well. Absolutely. Turn it over. Mm -hmm. Surrender. And also it's so important to forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on forgiving myself because I think I still have a lot of unforgiveness in my backpack. After 19 and a half years of sobriety, you need to get rid of the backpack. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I, I like I said, I'm a work in progress. Yeah, you know, and and that's really interesting. You've said this now like four or five times, work in progress, which comes to one of the things I teach. A lot of people think that salvation is some event because we prayed a prayer one day, and, and life gets easier. And that's that's salvation, and actually, salvation is is a journey. The believer's journey, if you will. Amen. It's a journey. Hello, the believer's I, journey, exactly. as you see behind Alan's head. <laughs> yes. It's a journey that we grow and become more like Jesus and yes. become like him day after day until we reach glorification. Exactly. That's salvation. It's our daily walk. And we, we shouldn't forget that. It wasn't because I said a prayer 40 years ago. Yeah. Some people say a prayer, walk away, and never think of it. But I'm saved because I said a prayer. It was that event. And it's actually, it's a walk. Paul says, to, I work out my salvation daily. I mean, it's something we walk through, work Absolutely. through, and live through. Abide in, mm -hmm. remain. Jesus called it abiding and remaining. So it's a thing that we go through. And I think that really plays a part in everybody's life, not just single parents, Absolutely. but everybody's life. And what's so beautiful, Alan, is... For those that are lost or those that were brought up in a in a family that to celebrate God and know God and live for God, it's never too late. It's never too late. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've done, God forgives us if we'll if we'll, you know Yeah. Look to him. And uh, be you four years old, be you forty years old, or be you eighty four years old, it's never too late to turn to God. You know, it's interesting. as a adult and now i have my mom living with us so it's kind of interesting um and, and one time you're lucky to still have her you're blessed to still have her sometimes okay you're right 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 right, right. of course um but but there was a time when she said something like i was a good mom and i write and so what's funny is that i'm the one in the family who speaks my mind and says it straightforward oh. i don't i don't i don't sugarcoat i never sugarcoat ever <laughs> Susan, you know, right? Susan okay. <laughs> does. My brothers do. You know, I, I just don't. So my mom said that. And I says, no, you weren't. You were a terrible mom. And she looked at me. And I, and, she, and then, you know, and then she stopped. And there was a long pause. And she says, well, I tried my best. She I did said, the best she could. Exactly what she said. She I, did I, did, she I tried the best I could. I says, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. You know, my dad did a terrible thing when he left. 
and and didn't support mm. and send support and it was mm. really hard mom went to work for a dollar 25 an hour <sighs> with five kids so it was really <sighs> difficult and and the things that happened but what, what she had she tried and, and i give her that and uh now now she says she's serving the lord and, and it's really a hard road for her because of all the past she's had to work through alcoholism for several years and forgiving and herself attitudes and forgiveness mm. and all that yeah so it's really pretty pretty interesting that she's in my home and we're going through that she goes to all my classes and teaches what a sweetheart. she's actually helped support this ministry she thinks it's god bless you really good alan's mama <laughs> Well, you know what? You're sitting here talking about the, 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 the families that are struggling in other countries and stuff um, by the mom or dad or both mom and the dad having mm -hmm. to go uh, leave to make money for, uh, to financially support the family. Your mother was one of those people. Yeah. She was one of those yeah. people. Well, you know, and what's hard is that one thing that I see today, in, not only in our country, but other countries, is that parents will go away, send money back, or parents will go out and send money in. And we want our kids to love us so much, we spoil them with cell phones and yeah. toys yeah. and money and trips and things that it's like, Oh, this kid is getting 15,000 toys. He's going to play with two of them. Right. Just give him a box. <laughs> Just give him a cardboard box. That's what we give our cat. Hello. Well, the cat, <laughs> yeah, kids love him too. You know, at Christmas time. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's amazing how how you see this and, and um, what they want. I mean, for me, I just wanted my dad to be around and yeah. love me. And he wasn't around. You know, I was I was an angry kid because of that. Hurt. I had to go through a lot of anger management in my twenties because my dad wasn't there all through my teen years. Alan, where does anger come from? Well, anger comes from all kinds of places. Yeah, but it comes from a lot, primarily from hurt. Yeah. When we're hurt, some people act out with anger. Yeah. And so we need to get to the root of the hurt. You know. Yeah, and. Um, and, and, you know, my dad, you know, toward the latter part of his years, about eight years before he, he died, he, I had a real harsh talk with him, and he seemed that he turned around after a while, and he came to live with me this last year. He lived, a, was alive. He was an amazing man of God, amazing man. He just totally turned his life around. And even my mom came to visit it and said, what's with your dad? He was never like this before. Uh, I said, I know. Wisdom <laughs> and yep. Yeah. yeah, so married a really neat lady, you know, and uh, my stepmother, I still honor her because my, my dad's wife. Sweet. And um, it's all biblical principle. You know, there's a, I, I love the Old Testament. I, I just absolutely love it. And there's some scriptures here I want to read before we were close. It says in Isaiah 40, 31, and this is pretty famous scripture, but those who wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up like wings of eagles, and mm -hmm. they shall not. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And that's something I think that we need to understand yes. when we're we're beaten down because we've got a job that's struggling here. We've got kids over here. Mm -hmm. We've got dinner at the table, and you're wiped out. <laughs> and laundry to do. And laundry to mm -hmm. do, and things to clean, and mm -hmm. yeah, and you have no one to help you. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. It is tough. It's really tough. Yeah. My mom taught me how to cook, taught me how to do laundry. You know, I was, when I was 10, 9 and 10 years old, I was a housekeeper. I was everything because there was no dad there. My mom was gone and uh, I had to babysit and do all the things. So I got okay. taught young how to do all those things. Uh -huh. So here's another one in Exodus 15 too. It says, the Lord is my strength and song. Strength and and song. Amen. I like that. You talk about music. Yes. I love music. Christian music. And yes. he has become my salvation. Amen. Okay. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. And always wear the armor of God. <laughs> so I think that when we, when we can apply scripture to the areas we're hurting. Absolutely. It, it's like there's healing in, in that. There's healing in, in God. There's healing in the Word. And I really think it's important we understand that. We can be in bad situations or hard situations. But I think, and you've you've been a testimony to this, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. 
If you keep your eyes on him and keep seeking to become like him, we are all a work in progress. If we keep our eyes on him, understand the foundation of a believer is to become like Jesus. If we all keep that in focus, our marriages, our children, our parents, all that we look at, all that we deal with, becomes easier to handle because yes. Jesus is the focus of that relationship. Yes. Surround yourself with like people that, that you want to mirror. And uh, I know before I found God, I was not with good people and I was fit in right well. And now I surround yourself with the people that you want to glorify God with. Exactly. Perfect. Perfect ending. Well, thank you so much for for joining us. That is the end of our program. And everyone, you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Aloha.